Okay, I'm trying to do a little craft room tour, and I'm trying to do it in one take because I broke my editing software somehow. And of course, when you try to do that, all you do is just make one mistake after another. So this is my fourth attempt. Um, I just wanted to kind of show you how I store my stuff, so maybe you can get some ideas on how to store your stuff if you have limited space, like most of us do. Um, my art room is my second guest bedroom. Um, we have another, our actual guest bedroom, but um, there are so many times when we have needed to guest rooms, you know, for like when families come to, friends that have kids come to stay with us, we need the extra bed. So I thought about taking it down and putting up a work table in here, but um, I'm just not quite ready to do that yet. And I'm going to try to hold this as steady as I can, but uh, you might just want to go take a Dramamine real quick, just in case, because I'm, I'm doing the best I can. That shirt is covering that mirror, because I just dragged myself out of bed like an hour ago, and I don't feel well. So this is that's for your own safety, I'm just saying. Um, we'll start with when you walk in the room. You come over here, and if you're on Pinterest, you know that you're supposed to be keeping your glitter in these little salt and pepper shakers. So I followed the instructions and put all my glitters in there. They are sitting on top of a wine rack that I got at a thrift store. I painted it white, laid it on its side, and I use it to store my frou-frou fibers. You know, not, not like the yarn I crochet with, but just decorative yarns. And I put them in these water bottles, and I just cut the top off of a water bottle and put them in there, because you know, they don't, they don't make a good ball. <clears throat> they don't hold together, but that works perfect. And then just stuck them in the wine rack. And these fibers used to live in a box in the closet. They were all in little individual Ziploc baggies. And I never used them because they were in a box in the closet. So I took them out, tied them on here. I've used them now more than I ever have. Um, you know, because they're in my face every day. So it doesn't look real good, but it works really well. At least I'm using them. All of that is sitting on top of this stack of iris carts. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I've had these for, I don't know, 100, 150 years, something like that. And these are all of the things that I use pretty regularly and I like to keep, you know, pretty close at hand. I want these kind of out where I can get to them easily. I'll just go through and show you the labels. You can kind of tell what's in them. This is like just miscellaneous um, collage and assemblage stuff and it's just separated by type. You know, glass, plastic, miscellaneous. And then I've got a drawer of keys and silverware. I'm sure everyone has a drawer that looks just exactly like that. I don't know what I'm going to do with those. Um, maps, foreign newspapers, doilies, coffee filters, you know, the usual. And there's some embellishment type stuff, uh, a few jewelry supplies, chalks, pastels. I don't have very many punches. They all fit in that drawer. And then we get into all of my ink pads and reinkers. Okay. I don't really sew. I just kind of basically repair so my sewing stuff fits in those drawers just fine and then we have all kinds of different uh, paints powdered pigments and some acrylic craft paint that kind of stuff then there's embossing powders resin more weird paint stuff, tape, glue, and my paint brushes. And that's it. Um, moving on around, these are my buttons, and I just put them in recycled jars, separate kind of by color so I can find them easy. 
and then over here avoiding the mirror I don't feel well today and I look even worse we have um, this is a dressing table I guess it's my great grandmother's and I really don't make good use of it I don't I don't know what to put in the drawers I've got you know, when my pens and drawing stuff isn't spread out all over the house which it usually is then I'll stick stuff in here and I have journals stashed everywhere but I need to make better use of that I have a couple of sewing machines that both kind of work halfway so between the two I manage for what little sewing I need to do these are little containers that Claire thing has jump rings in it and I make jewelry out of hardware, um, you know, washers and nets and springs and stuff. So that's my jewelry hardware. And these are little brads, eyelets, decorative paper clips, those kinds of things. Those are the paintbrushes I've been using recently. And we come around over here. I made those flowers a while back. I don't remember. I was just playing. Um, this little thing has all of my old rusty hardware that I use. Um, I like to find old rusty saws at thrift stores. You get them for like five dollars. And then you can hang all this stuff off of them and make some of the coolest wind chimes. I've got one hanging right outside my front door. Taylor, my daughter, was really worried that um, someone, you know, would steal it because it's kind of big and hanging there all conspicuously but I told her I put a curse on it and if anyone steals it they're gonna get tetanus off of it and die so you know I think it kind of gives off that don't touch me vibe and it's fine uh, oh this is the window where I look out at my neighbor behind me and I watch him sweep his roof kid you not the man gets up there with a broom and a dustpan and he sweeps his roof I can't figure it out I'm almost obsessed with trying to find out why he does that every time I go outside to ask him why he's doing that he runs in the house like he sees me coming he runs in the house I don't know what that's all about but you know I mean look his roof isn't all that dirty I can't imagine why he would need to get up there and sweep it I'm wondering if I need to sweep mine Oh, anyway, this is, um, this is not really a table. I'm looking for a dresser to put right here. I want a cool old, you know, antique dresser. I just haven't found the right one yet. Um, what this is, this is more hidden iris carts. Oh, gosh. And this is my rubber stamps. I used to be a, a very avid rubber stamper and I still use my stamps just not quite as much as I used to but I've got two sections of mounted stamps and then two sections of unmounted stamps and I don't use hardly any of these rarely do I get in these drawers anymore but I need to go through them and decide what to keep and what can go but y'all there's a lot of them a lot every drawer is stuffed full so that's going to be a big chore and uh, probably followed by a big sale um, this is just little parts and pieces lace ribbons fibers I have just a little short piece I stick it in there and these are out because I'm going to use them for Halloween they just they look Halloweeny even though they're really not they're just player piano rolls that I buy at thrift stores. Another thing I pick up compulsively, doorknobs. I don't know why. I just love old doorknobs. I really should do something great with them. I have with these. I've made some, uh, like a coat hanger rack out of those because I had so many of them, but um, I need to quit buying doorknobs. Those are some of the old books I pick up at thrift stores, and I usually end up um, using those for parts you know with the pages or I'll take the covers off and use the covers and that's a pile of junk that needs to be put away I just haven't done it that is a wedding dress in a jar that's what I call it 
It's actually the trim off of a wedding dress that I bought at a thrift store for next to nothing. It had great trim on it. And okay, I know that looks weird because I just stuck those weird paint brushes in there. But that's a, a whole thing of copper tubing that came out of the garage. And my husband went temporarily brain dead and was going to throw it away. Who throws away copper tubing? So I dug it out of the trash and saved it. I've used it for jewelry and stuff. And this little rack, you just need to rush right out to Harbor Freight and pick you up one of these. I can't remember how much it was, but I know it was it was under twenty dollars. It's not the sturdiest thing in the world, you know. It's not like you know anthropology cool, but it'll work. And I keep more of my rusty old treasures in here. I pick up things out of parking lots, and I know it's weird, but I love rusty metal. Sometimes I do stuff with it. Sometimes I don't. But I just like having it. And this, see I used this last Halloween. It was just a baby food jar full of rusty little brads. And then I stuck a label on it that I got off the internet. So I'll use that again this Halloween. These are awesome. I got these at a... I'm showing you my stuff like I said I wasn't going to. Okay, forget it. Never mind. That is sitting on top of this thing that has mostly tools in it. Um, scissors and wire cutters, pliers, hammers, uh, what is that? Safety pins, needles, clamps, exacto knife, uh, mostly jewelry pliers and um, sprayer and a spatula because sometimes you need a spatula. Heat guns, ceiling irons, hot wires, stuff like that. And then we have some more, we have white iris carts and then some little ones. And they're just little, um, you can see what's in those. Small, anytime I have a small ephemera type deal, I throw it in there. It's my little toss in ephemera drawer. And in here, my Cricut stuff. Um, paper mache boxes and shaped things. I have a couple empty drawers, which is good. Room to grow. I don't know what all else. I think most of this came from American Science and Surplus, which is one of my favorite stores in the universe. And they had these awesome vials. There was like 600 of them for $15. And I'll show you what I did with those. Okay, moving around. My mother-in-law gave me that shoe holder that I think her mother made. And I didn't need it for shoes, but I sure needed it for long pokey stuff, as you can see. I, um, I have a whole bunch of old, um, these are vintage, those aren't, these are vintage knitting needles. So a whole bunch of those. And skewers and chopsticks. And I sometimes make these paper tubes out of magazine pages. And I don't know what I intend to do with those, but it'll be great, whatever it is. And this little um, cabinet needs to be painted, and I've been saying that for about 20 years. Underneath in the file box, there are some clear envelopes, and there are things like um, templates and patterns and um, like knitting and crochet patterns and stuff like that is in there. And then inside this cabinet is... Oops, paper and cardstock and that's not uh, patterned paper just plain like scrapbook paper or uh, regular plain cardstock paper and we have closets I'll do those in a minute that um, this little thing right here that basket has a bunch of um, stuff in it that I'm I have a project I'm working on I'll have to tell you about that later and on top of it, these are the rubber stamps that I mostly use, which is not very many compared to what I have. And then that was my great-grandmother's, it was a magazine rack, and in there I keep cutting mats and 
rulers and my Cricut mat and stuff like that. Um, this closet it's going to be kind of hard. It's dark in, in the closet. Well, maybe you can see. Um, it's just stuff. Supplies. Just things and you know they're not really in any specific order as long as I label everything then uh, you know I'm good with it I'll just stick it in there wherever so you can kind of see what that is oh, I'll show you this I need a I need a, a, a photographer no a videographer I should have got my daughter to do this or she would laugh at me through the whole thing. This is where I keep my alphabets. And I got, this is another American Science and Surplus. It was maybe, I don't know, $10, $15. But it has almost the right number of cubbies for one for every letter of the alphabet. I had to, it actually has the right number, but I divided this one in two with a piece of cardboard so that in this one I could put numbers and symbols and stuff. But that's where I put all my, you know, chipboard letters and little wooden letters and stuff. Things that are not on sheets. I have the sheets right there on top. And then, okay, moving slowly back to this shelf is these printer's trays are full of uh, rhinestones. Um, all vintage rhinestones and I use them in the jewelry that I make. Just can get one out without spilling it. And this is where I used all of those vials that I got from American Science and Surplus. I put the um, small stones in the little vials with a cork. Can you see? I don't know where the camera is focusing. Probably not at all. And then the bigger stones I put in these. So, pretty cool. I love those. I bought these printer trays again, like, I don't know, 15 years ago. This was before everyone figured out that they were cool because I got, I bought them from a printer. I got 15 wooden ones and about 10 plastic ones. And a whole bunch of other stuff from him for 50 bucks. I know. You can hate me. It's all right. I have more of these in the garage I haven't even used yet. I'll figure out something to do with them. Down here we have, I call these my floppy papers. Napkins and tissue paper. Goes in that little bin. And that's scraps. And that's more little scraps. And that's fabric that I don't really use. I don't even know why I keep it around. Um... I don't know. Actually, the fabric I use is in my bedroom in a cabinet, but, you know, you never know. There's my glue. This is my um, scrapbook paper, and I, I don't keep tons of scrapbook paper on hand because I tend to, you know, when I get it, I use it. So, it doesn't accumulate like a lot of things do. On this side, I'll start up here. This has some of the pendants that I've made out of hardware, as you can see. Let me put those back on Etsy. And that is just some ribbons and stuff on a one of those pants hanger deals. And then here's more ribbon. This was on a uh, it's like an over the door towel rack that. Um, was at a thrift store because there isn't a door in America that it will fit over. It's just poorly made. And right here is my little make-do shelf for my yarn. We don't own this house. We rent it. We treat it kind of like we own it. But um, yeah, putting a shelf in here I felt was just a little bit, a little bit too much construction for renters to do. So I made do. Um, chipboard and those boxes down there have old dress patterns and uh, sewing trim stuff like that oh okay 
that's my timer. So um, that means I need to move to part two.